good morning and welcome to vlog number 10. This time with a special episode, we're going to Nuremberg to a whiskey exhibition. By train actually, this is the train already waiting in the background. And we're going there with our whiskey club. They didn't arrive so far, but hey, it's a whiskey club. Hi, <laughs> Andre. Good morning. The train departed and we were in high spirits already. Bernhard's wife had baked chocolate whiskey muffins. Each and every one with a little slogan on it. Thank you so much Waltrad, they were amazingly good. Chocolate and whiskey are the basic ingredients of every successful breakfast. We appropriately refreshed and strengthened leaned back to enjoy the train ride all across Bavaria. the station in Munich and we got about 20 to 25 minutes to catch our next train to Nuremberg. The journey to Nuremberg went smooth as could be, and right there on the platform, Bernhard's son Yuki welcomed us. Yuki had completed his studies here, and due to his local knowledge and his affinity to German Railways Limited, turned out to be a master of travel arrangement, a bird of paradise, and freaking awesome character that we all liked immediately. Alrighty, done that. Being in Nuremberg. Well, the room looks pretty good. I gotta go down. We'll meet in a couple of minutes and go to the exhibition. So let's rock it. The whiskey exhibition, The Village in Nuremberg, is part of the Liege Affair and was founded back in the year 2013. The Liege Affair is all about innovations in the area of sports, holiday, home and gardening and covers a substantial part of the space. Therefore, it was not so easy to track Exhibition Hall 10, home of whiskey and rum. On its entrance, we were being equipped with a Glencairn glass, including an engraved logo and the corresponding lanyard, and found ourselves within the paradise of 2,500 types of whiskey from 18 different countries. Mr. Smith and I embarked our voyage of discovery along the fair stands, where a sample shot of whiskey ranged from 2 bucks all the way up till 200 bucks. Or even Scottish clothing and furniture was an investment option. The first stand that caught our attention was this young man here. 
who turned out to be the master distiller and name giver to the Swabian Highland Distillery Finch. Now, I would consider my relationship with whiskies made within the German-speaking world, that is Austria, Germany and Switzerland, as being expectant. But the gentle presence of Mr. Fink and something in his voice when he talked about his whiskey attracted my attention. I tasted a six-year-old Swabian Highland whiskey. The Finch distillery lies at an altitude of 2,300 feet and therefore almost on the same level as my hometown. The mainly used corn was the ancient dinkel wheat, of which I am a great fan of in bread and pastry. The whiskey was matured in exclusive port casks, bottled at 42% alcohol and a surprise in every aspect. We instantly agreed to keep an eye on the Swabian Highland Distillery Finch and will grace them with our presence in the foreseeable future. It might be worth taking a closer look at that one. In the meanwhile, they do have a beautifully designed homepage, German only though. I can only recommend looking it up. This is all very well done. I of course will put a link below the video. Then a Tomatine poster caught my attention and I realized that Mr. Smith already had picked up track too. Tomatine is a highland distillery with a history going all the way back to the 15th century and probably would have some awesome tales to tell. In 1897 it was reopened as a formal distillery and curiously enough there had been several moments in time where they thought we should double the number of our stills. They went from two stills to four in 1956, from six to 11 in 1961, and in 1974 from 11 to 23. The 1980s and 90s left their trace, and today Tomatin sails under the flag of the Takara Shuzo company, producing roughly 2 million liters or 550,000 gallons pure alcohol a year, with their six wash and four spirit stills. The shift in emphasis from the blended whiskey industry towards single malt, their fight for more transparency in labeling the age statement of whiskey, and the introduction of their single malt range makes Tomatin one of the high-end Highland brands that even managed to offer great value at a low cost. I like Tomatin. In the meanwhile, we entirely lost our whiskey club and our friends. Which is not that hard because we have a lot of whiskey inside so far. There is a huge variety of whiskey sellers and resellers, which is quite astonishing, and I can't wait to see more of them. I represent Fair Islands Whiskey. Right. And um, we want to make a distillery in the Fair Islands because uh, there are different reasons for that. Uh, we have very clean uh, water, right. and we have a special atmosphere because we're in the middle of the Gulf Stream which uh, is warm, so the, the ocean is warm, right. which makes uh, the atmosphere moist. The Faroe Islands are far up north of the North Atlantic. Yeah, uh, so, so I am Austrian. I know exactly where the Faroe Islands are. <laughs> The reason why most of the Austrians do know where the Fair Isles are located dates back to a certain soccer qualification game in 1990. By the way, the last soccer game I ever watched when our national team was in it. I turned towards whiskey after it. Right after it, actually. This very likable islander told us about a spectacular idea. The magnificent nature of the Fair Isles already provides all the salty winds you could ask for and crystal clear water and therefore is destined being home to a distillery. So they will be launching their own cryptocurrency coins in respect of European and US regulations and be the world's first crypto funded distillery to set their ambition producing 800 to 1000 barrels of whiskey with two classic copper stills a year into action. Which we believe is a super interesting idea. On their homepage, that I will link in the comment section, 
You can indicate your interest. The so-called initial coin offering starts in May 2019 and I am so in. So we accidentally, but at least entirely, had found our friends again. And we gathered at the line of scrimmage to discuss the second down. And sure enough, the last quarter of the game still had some pleasant surprises in it. We had a meet and greet with Coinet Limited, a company run by those two pretty busy yet friendly and capable guys. That have specialized in Japanese whiskies, such as Yamasaki or Lafroig, say what? Lafroig is part of the Suntory Trust, one of the five biggest liquor corporations in the world. And they're in good company with Beaumore, Connemara, Jim Beam or Canadian Club, just to name a few. We were getting to know this diehard Irishman here, what in terms of our forthcoming Ireland whiskey journey in May, turned out to be beneficial. We received an invite to enjoy a free dram of the award-winning Temple Bar whiskey in the Temple Bar. We had a little sneak peek beforehand and were impassioned. The afternoon finally drew to a close, the exhibition slowly closed its gates, and we were ready to rock the town and decided to take a train into the German city of Fürth to take a deeper look at the Guinness and whiskey repository of a certain local pub. We arrived there happy as could be and after a short survey of the menu we went to Guinness. Well, good morning from the beautiful city of Nuremberg, Germany and the day after the whiskey exhibition, The Village. We are going to take a little breakfast downstairs and then take the long way home with the train. But due to the fact that things got a little longer yesterday, it's gonna be probably a silent journey. So I'll leave the camera in the back. If you like this episode, please leave us a thumbs up. Uh, even better, leave us a comment. I really enjoy answering those and if you haven't already, please subscribe to our channel and please, please recommend it to your family and friends as I recommend myself as your Bernie Gator.